God must transform you. The theme of this solemn assembly is transformed people who will transform their city and of course leading to a transformed nation. If you and I are not transformed, believe you me, to think that the city will be changed or a nation will be changed <clears throat> will be a dream. People make up cities. Cities make up nations. So people make up nations. And if there, is, there are no transformed people, there can be no transformed nation. Hallelujah. A conference has started, like I said. On Friday, I'm going to show you something that will blow your mind. This book that you have been carrying is the key. There is no other key anywhere. If you have your Bible in your heart, you have the master key to unlock any door. Today we are talking of fourth revolution, fourth industrial revolution. We are talking of artificial intelligence. We are talking of all of those. The master key that unlocked it was this Bible. Nothing else. They can say they are godless today. They may not go to church today, but that is the foundation. And when you have that master key and you know how to use it, your life will continually and perpetually be transformed. Amen. That foundation that was laid centuries ago is what the world is building on. The track has been laid. The train tracks that was laid 200 years ago in Britain, where they developed the first train, what have you, that track that was laid is what every other person, they're having bullet train in Japan today. It was because a track was laid somewhere. The foundation of which is the Bible. Hallelujah. You must have a totally different relationship with the Bible. It's not an ordinary book. It's life. It's God. Hallelujah. Jude, verses 20 and 21 from the message. We'll take our text there, and I'll just remind you of a few things, and we're going to pray. Hallelujah. The transformer himself has visited you. But you, dear friends, please read together with me. But you, Carefully, just pause a minute. Carefully do what? Build. It is something that must be done with care, not carelessly. Don't take your spiritual life with levity. It's something you must carefully do. It's not something you casually do. I encourage you to read a chapter of Proverbs every day. Some of you would do it because the pastor may ask. That's a careless way to build your life. It's about you. It says, but you, dear friends, carefully build yourselves up. Build your capacity. In this most holy faith, there are many kinds of faith, but this one is most holy. By doing what? By doing what? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Staying right at the center of God's love. It's not just praying in the Holy Spirit. It starts there. But then you must stay right at the center of the love of God. Keeping your arms, how? 
open and outstretched to receive. Many of you come to the service and the Holy Spirit is moving and you are wondering, what are they doing? What thing that they do here? Ah, me or me, I don't know. Then you strength, then that's when you do this. Your hand is not stretched. Your arms are not open. Your spirit is therefore not open. You are busy looking everywhere. The Holy Ghost is moving and you are feeling something on your inside and you are doing like this, up on it like that. Hey, no, me. How would I go here and say, an old man like me, they fall? No. You are not ready. Keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready for what? For the mercy of our master, Jesus Christ. If you are ready, the Yoruba says when a child is a child that does what? Please help me. Is the child that uh, how is he ready? What, how do they say? He's the one that stretches his hands. That's the one you will carry. You see a little boy crying now, and then you want to go, and he talks like this. No, no, no. Will you carry the child? But you move near a child, and he's already doing like this. Even if you don't want to carry, you will carry. Because he's already stretched forth his hands. It says, keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready for the mercy of our master, Jesus Christ. Are you ready for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ? And then look at the way he said, he said, this is the what? This is the what? The real. Glory to God. This is the unending life. The real life. Carefully building yourselves up in your most in this most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourself in the center of the love of God, stretching forth your arms, opening up your heart to receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, This is the unending life the real life. I'm praying that the real life will be your portion. Yeah. You will not major in minors and minors in majors. Yeah. You will keep the real things the real thing. Yeah. I say you will keep the real thing the real thing. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. I titled this short exhortation, Enlarging Your Spiritual Capacity. Enlarging Your Spiritual Capacity. And in looking at all the things that we need to do, if we will turn our assets into liabilities, we recently concluded on Jephthah identifying his primary oil which was his strength. He became a mighty man of valor. But in the process, we did say to you that it's not enough. Your primary oil, your oil, primary, your oil is not enough. Your primary talent is not enough. If your oil is going to be profitable, you need other capacities to be developed. And we identified seven other of them. We identified leadership. Everything rises and falls with leadership. We identified emotional intelligence. We identified negotiation skills. Uh, is diplomatic skills. You need to be diplomatic. We identified intellectual capacity. We identified integrity. And we also identified spiritual capacity. And we showed you how Jephthah built his capacity over the years, along with every other skills that he needed. 
He depended upon God. Judges 11. He depended upon God. Verse 27. We'll read to 29. Judges 11, 27 to 29. Therefore, I have not sinned against you, but you wronged me by fighting against me. May the Lord, the judge, render judgment this day between the children of Israel and the people of Ammon. In spite and despite of all that has happened, 28 says, however, the king of the people of Ammon did not heed the words of uh, Jephthah that he sent to him. And 29, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. And things began to happen. Look at all the other skills he had demonstrated that we have seen. He had emotional intelligence. He had good negotiation skills. He had diplomatic skills. He had put all of them to use. <clears throat> but he didn't depend on that alone. He knows that it's not by power, neither is it by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. When he invited God to the scene, the Holy Ghost came upon him. And he turned to another man. He became transformed to another man. And then he began to move from one city to the other. And as he was moving, men began to mobilize after him and he advanced towards the people of Ammon. Friends, it's never by power. It's not. But in addition, and neither is it by the Spirit alone. Amen? If you just have the spirit and you don't have emotional intelligence and you don't have negotiation skills and you don't have diplomatic skills, you don't have leadership skills, will you get anywhere? That's where error comes in. That's where heresy comes in. That's where you begin to see funny, funny things that are not balanced. The spirit told me, they will tell you all manners of let me not go into it. Hallelujah. Jephthah. He enlarged his spiritual capacity. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go with me to Nehemiah chapter 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Earlier this year, a few months ago, we looked at a man known as Nehemiah. During our discourse on the counter strategies for avoiding psychological warfare, just want to show you Nehemiah and I will show you Joseph and you are going to pray. Amen? Amen? Because without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing. Without God being in the center of all your skills, you will misbehave and your oil will never profit you. Amen? But what do I see these days? Many of us are so distracted with life and we push the real life to the background. It is good that a man has knowledge. That a soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Knowledge is good. All of those skills are good. But without your spiritual capacity being enlarged and without a solid relationship with the Holy Spirit, your oil may still not profit you. As a matter of fact, it may destroy you. Hallelujah. And that's why, I thank God for the move of the Spirit already, but you are going to activate something on your inside. You are going to move to a new level. 
in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. To be transformed into another man. You had those beautiful exhortations on them. How many of you know what the pupa is? You know what the pupa is? In that value chain, to think, how is the pupa like? How is it? How does it look like? Technology, can you pull out the pupa for me? What does it look like? To think that is the pupa, that shell, that is just round. If you see it, you won't even can kick it. Is what becomes butterfly. That's the transformation we are talking of. You could never, in your wildest imagination, link a pupa with a butterfly. Hello? True. You can't. That's the kind of transformation. You can't. Unless you know the process. So when Saul became a new man because of the spirit, when a man that was driven out of his parents' house, who was homeless, who was called a vagabond, who only had worthless men going about with him, and then that same guy, a few years down the road, became the president. What kind of a thing is that? Hello? The guy you know under the bridge, when you are driving under the bridge, I can imagine his brother, say, they won't even want to identify with him. He's not our brother. They say, is that not your brother? You are mad. We don't know him. The guy under the bridge, homeless, with worthless men, and then one day, becomes the owner of the land. Say, hey guys, what exactly do you say is the problem between, why are you fighting my land? And they came and called him to become the commander in chief. That is a transformation. Is someone here? That's what transformation is all about. Can you relate that worthless man to the commander in chief? Come and be our commander. The elders gathered and deliberated. Look, we need someone to help us. We are helpless as a nation. And the only man they could remember was that worthless man under the bridge. He was homeless. That was where he was staying. That was where he learned to be a street boy. To fight and he discovered his strength. That's transformation. It takes the Holy Spirit to bath such a supernatural transformation. Can I have an amen? Amen. Because sometimes I told you, sometimes you read these things, but you can't just put them together. But each time you read the Bible, you must see yourself in it. Ask yourself some questions. What is this word saying about me? What instructions can I get from this Bible? What corrections can I take from this passage? What lessons can I learn? Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The word of God is given for what? Yes, let them put it on the screen so that you will see it. Every time you are reading your Bible, you must ask yourself these questions. What corrections are there for me? What reproofs? What instructions? What guidance? What is there? It's not just reading. You don't just read the Bible for reading's sake. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It's about your life. You must realize what is wrong. If I'm reading that passage, hey, what's wrong with me? It corrects us when we are wrong. So you must look for the correction. Is it a correction? And it teaches us to do what is right. It's an instruction that can teach you what is right. Correct you when you are wrong. Reproof you and guide you. The lessons. What lessons are in these scriptures for me? What can I learn from Jephthah? 
What can I learn? What corrections can I make? I've looked down on myself and I've thought nothing good can come out of my life. But this was a guy that was rejected by his father, rejected by his mother, rejected by his stepbrothers, rejected by his stepmother. The only one he had ever known as and called mother. He didn't go to hang himself. He didn't go for sniper. But he took his destiny in his hands. And that made him to discover who he was. What are the names of his brothers? They drove him out of the house without inheritance. They said, you will have no part in our father's inheritance. With the inheritance that they had, where are they? Where are they with the inheritance? Were they ever mentioned anymore? You are fighting over inheritance. <laughs> you are fighting over inheritance. Use the whole of this hall to stack dollars. Let them give you. Give yourself 10 years. By the time you buy one private jet and use it to carry your girlfriends all over and your new friends, the second year, you crash the jet. If you survive, God bless you. If it doesn't kill you. By the time you even don't even go to private jet, by the time you buy one or two exotic cars, take a holiday around the world, treat your girlfriend and do honeymoon, the money is finished. They drove him out of his father's house. But he discovered his oil. Hallelujah. Amen. Prosperity is never in a place. Is in what? Person. It's in a place in you. They threw him out, but they couldn't throw out his oil from his life. That's right. Once you have your oil and you discover it, it will bring profit to your life. Amen. The Spirit of God made a difference in the life of Jephthah. Hallelujah. Amen. Time will not permit me to go to David. But just like Jephthah, men that were discontent, men that were in debt, men that were in distress, they gathered around him as well. Eventually, this man became the mighty man of David that supported him on the throne. Why and how? By the Spirit of the Lord. Nehemiah. He had a project to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And this man, you know the various things that he had to go through. And we looked at them in detail. But please give me Nehemiah chapter 6. Verse 1 and 2. It happened when Sambalat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the door in the gates, they sent to me saying, come, let us meet among the villages in the plain of Ono, but they thought to do me what? Harm. They thought to do me harm. Hallelujah. How did Nehemiah know they wanted to do him harm? How did he sense? The New Living Translation says he sensed that they wanted to harm him. How did he sense that they wanted to harm him? Glory to God. Amen? I'm just trying to, you know, we've gone through these things in detail. But I want you to redefine your relationship with the Holy Spirit from today. The days ahead are going to be tough. There will be many business offers. And as those offers are coming, some are to take you out and destroy what you have built and labored for for years. That's what some of them will be for. Psalm 10. He sits in the locking places of the villages. In secret places, he murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. The enemy sits in locking places in the village. In the secret places, he tries to murder the innocent, 
But thank God. Give it to us in the NIV. He lies in wait near the villages from ambush. He murders the innocent and his eyes in watch in secret for his victims. Amen? Look at that is His eyes are watching in secret for his victims. There are those who are monitoring your life and your progress. How you are doing. All they want to do is destroy. That's what the devil does. They are monitoring how he's going. How is his business doing? What of his relationship life? Is there any bubble coming now? Oh, he has just taken a new girlfriend. Eh, okay, we shall see. He lies in wait near the villages. That's the business of the devil. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. They are, those, they are monitoring your relationship, monitoring your career, monitoring your business, monitoring your progress. In secret. That's what the devil is doing. And that's why, whereas others are fighting for their God, it is only your God that can fight for you. You are trying to mind your business life. You, are, you say, oh, thank God for my relationship life. God is doing some great things. And then, they are, every facet of your life is not spared. How many can you show yourself? Can you keep watch yourself? Amen? Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? Nehemiah had just finished building the walls, only that he had not hung the doors. And yet they invited him, let's meet in the plain of Ono. They wanted to kill him there. If he had showed up, how did he know? The Holy Spirit. How was he able to discern it? If not for the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How did they know? How did he know that it was a ploy to get the work to be frustrated and stopped and kill him? Please quickly go with me to verse number 10. As I begin to round up, if we are not able to look into Joseph, then so be it. Nehemiah. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehitabel, who was a secret informer, and he said, let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night, they will come to kill you. When SSS sends a message to you, I say, bro, let's meet in church. I have classified information that they are sending hired assassins to your house. Hello? Can you relate with the message? Shemaiah was a secret informer. He was in the secret service. So when an SSS that you know Top-ranking SSS calls you with your friend and tells you, look, I have classified information. They are sending hired assassins to your house. Let's meet in church. You can't stay in that house. Let your family and wife, let them go to your brother's house. But you come to church so that we can protect you. They are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night, they will come to kill you. What happened? Next verse. And I said, should such a man as I flee? Who is there such as I? Who will go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. In the face of such facts, hear what Jeremiah is doing. And I said, verse 13, then I perceived that God had not sent him at all. This guy was in DSS and he was also a prophet. In God's house. Hello? I was inviting you. Come, let's meet in church. I perceived that God had not sent him at all and that he pronounced this prophecy against me because he had been hired by Tobiah and Sambalat. A layman. How was he able to discern that this so called prophet? was now not on an errand for God, but for men. Verse 13. Friends, you must redefine your relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report. Hallelujah. Please give us 12 and 12 to 13 and 14 in the message. And we'll leave Nehemiah alone. I sensed that God has not sent, sent this man. I sensed that God had not sent this man. The so-called prophecy he spoke was the work of Tobiah and Sambalat. They had hired him. He had been so hired to do what? To scare me off and trick me. A layman. A layman had such a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He was able to perceive that a prophet was sent not by God. A layman. He was a man in the marketplace. He was a butler to the king. And he was able to have a higher discernment to discern that a prophet was a hired prophet. A layman. He had a great relationship with the Holy Spirit. He carefully built his life. Hello? He carefully built his life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He had been hired to scare me off, trick me a layman into desecrating the temple and ruining my good reputation so that they could accuse me. Verse 14. Oh my God. Don't let Tobiah and Sambalat get by with all the mischief they have done. You are going to pray that prayer for yourself. And the same goes for the prophetess Noadia and the odd, how many other what prophets who have been trying to undermine my confidence, my confidence in God. Servants of God, fake prophets, they will prophesy into your life and you will have no faith. Your faith will now be in them. If you don't see them, you can't do anything. If you don't see them, you cannot travel. If you don't hear, Daddy, should I travel? Travel. Daddy, there's this business I want to do. Should I take it? Take it. Uh, Daddy, uh, you know, I, there's a lady I've been believing God for. Should I marry him? Come and see me. Bring the lady. Before you know it, he started sleeping with the girl. Your life becomes, your faith now is towards them. No longer God. They destroy your confidence. Because you have not developed your own relationship with the Holy Spirit. They destroy your confidence. You have no faith in God anymore. Your life is dependent upon them, so-called prophets. You have two letters of appointment. You don't know the, that. <laughs> you bring it. Which one should I do? Don't you have God? Are you not a child of God? Many lives have been ruined. Many lives have been destroyed because they did not develop their relationship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. Where is your relationship with the Lord? As I round up this morning so that we can pray, men can use prophecy to manipulate you into error. So-called prophets. Hallelujah. It is not unusual for politicians to have prophets praying for them. You see the war. This pastor, this congregation, they are for this. That one is for that. That one is for that. Because the man has no relationship. Nehemiah was a layman. In black and white. A layman. And yet, he perceived. He sensed. That was in the Old Testament. What of now? in the new. He had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now you speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost is on your inside, but there is no discernment. No eyes. You have eyes you don't see. You have ears you cannot hear. Glory to God. Amen. Let me round up so that we can pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26, NIV. Let's read from 22 to 25. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The words of a gossip are like choice muscles. They go down to the inmost parts. Where do they go to? Since they are choice words. They go down into the soul. Okay, next verse. Like a coating of silver dross on earthenware are fervent lips. Fervent lips with an evil heart. Sweet mouth. Meanwhile, the heart says it's like a coating of silver dross on earthenware. How does it look? Is it not shining? Shine, shine, bobo. Wow, this is nice. Fervent lips. And there are many of them around you in your marketplace. Fervent lips with evil heart. Many of them your friends. They are smiling. <laughs> this is nice. Wow. Praise God. Thank God. This is cool. And then they toast to unwrap you. Their heart is evil. How do you deal with that? If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you don't develop your spiritual capacity. Next verse. Enemies is who they are. They disguise themselves with their lips, but in their heart they do what? Deceit. Their heart they what? Have deceit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The life giver is here. Is a life giver. Is a life changer. Though their speech is what? Charming. Do not. Them. Do not. Them. How many abominations fill their heart? Seven. 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 Hallelujah. How many destinies and lives have been destroyed by friends? Sweet lips, but inside the heart is deceit. If you have nothing, you must have discernment. If you have nothing, in this season, you must have ears that hear, eyes that see. Can I have an amen? Yeah. You must quit being a simpleton. Everything you take, hook, line, and sinker, everything you take must come up in your spiritual capacity. Yeah. In your discernment, you must come up. Yeah. You must be able to read into the hearts of men. And this can only come when you develop your spiritual capacity. Please give us Jude 20 and 21 again. We're going to read this and take some prayers. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we are grateful to you. Jude, verses 20 and 21. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nehemiah developed his discernment. He developed his discernment. He was able to discern ears that hear, eyes that see. Jephthah developed his spiritual capacity. And you, dear friends, God is speaking to us. Carefully build yourselves up in this most holy faith. This is the most holy faith you can have. But you must carefully build yourself up. And how do you do it? Number one, praying in the Holy Spirit. Number two, staying right in the center of God's love. The love of God. The love of God. <clears throat> you must love the unlovables, but with your eyes wide open. Jesus said, watch and pray. They will speak. They will rap you. They will say all manners of things. You must be able to decode what they are saying. Hallelujah. Staying right at the center of God's love. Keeping your arms open and outstretched. In other words, you must keep your heart open to the Lord. Ready for the mercy of our master, Jesus Christ. This is the unending life. Hallelujah. In the last seven days, we have been waiting upon the Lord in fasting. We have been fasting and waiting upon him. 
Last night I prayed for you, those of you who are here, that you will have an encounter with God. 